In part one, I argued that butts can be thought about as a confluence of two gestural lumps on each side. One that comes in from the top of the hips toward the butthole, and another that heads out from the sacrum towards the thigh. But that's all hypothetical so far. Let's look at drawing butts for real. In general, the light is above the butt, and it catches only the top of the upper gesture and the rest is in shadow, creating a trapezoid of light right under the belt line and obscuring the rest. This is especially the situation if we're looking at butts in skirts or loose jeans or whatnot, where the butt is really only pushing at the cloth here, in that upper section, and beyond that is either draping folds, or in the case of jeans, diamond-like compression folds that are being tugged at from the inseam. I'll be doing an entire video on the glory of compression folds later, so look for that. Hold on to your arses. On the other hand, in the situation of a butt in tight jeans, the cut of the jeans are going to be altering the shape of the butt, ever more so with juicier butts. While a lot has to do with a specific cut of the jeans, I usually think of all jeans as kind of like a butt bra, where the butt gestures are being held up away from the thigh fold, kind of cajoled toward the center, uh, and generally just smoothed out into one big sphere. Not my favorite look, but that's just because I'm a purist, no judgment. Now for that classic contrapposto pose that all butt lecturers seem to want to cover. Uh, our visual cues for where the weight is, besides the obvious tip of the hips, is that the weight-bearing leg has the pelvis stacked really tightly over the femur, which tucks the lower gesture of the butt into the thigh, creating a strong horizontal fold going out toward the trochanter. The upper gesture is also getting pushed up too, so it's going to be perky. The non-weight-bearing leg has the femur angled away from the pelvis, so the lower gesture of the butt is just hanging out there for all to see, creating the soft outward diagonal that blends into the thigh without a strong crease. Of possible interest, the butt will obviously also change shape slightly when flexed, as both of these gluteus muscles are going to be pulling inward and upward toward the sacrum. The peaks of both of those muscles are going to be moving in this direction, and depending on how much fat is smoothing everything out, this is also going to create a bit of a bowl between the gluteus and the trochanter. A person's body, as a combination of skeletal shape and their muscle shape and fat distribution, is going to emphasize different parts of these two butt gestures that I keep talking about, uh, creating the great wide world of variety of butt shapes that we can all appreciate. And this isn't the only way to approach butts, of course, because all butts are going to be different. But I like trying to find these two gestures within every ass that I'm drawing to give me some structure for how to parse the shapes. Here's some examples. If I'm presented with a body that prefers to pile fat up over here, over the gluteus medius, creating this higher heart-shaped distribution, for instance, I'm just thinking of it as the upper gesture of the butt being dominant and the lower gesture being smaller, but I'm still thinking about both gestures when I'm drawing. Here's another butt, which carries itself much lower, with the outward uh, lower gesture being further accentuated with these lovely saddlebags, and the upper inward gesture being attenuated, but it's still there. And here's a small tight butt on a narrow pelvis with a rather perky muscular upward inward gesture that really peaks at the center, obscuring the lower gesture in shadow. Here's a gorgeous fat butt, which seems to have eaten up its pelvis, but note how the upper inward gesture still permeates through all that flesh because the fat is built on top of the same deep internal structure. Also note how the insistence of those surface bones at the sacrum and out here at the trochanter create the dimples that seem to hold the butt shape together despite its size. Okay, right, so talking about butts is good fun, but it doesn't actually get any butt drawings done. So now you're going to have to go out and practice drawing butts on your own, in their natural environment, hopefully with these two gestures in mind. Uh, if you can't find any butts in your area and you don't have any fast and loose friends who want to get naked for you, this is hardly an excuse in my book. Go find a mirror, lock your bedroom drawer, drop trow, start sketching, because your own butt is your own best butt model. As given enough mirrors, you can pose it in any way you want and you never have to pay for its services. Okay, so that's my dissertation on butts. Thank you for watching the first ever episode of Dax Explains, a how-to series where I, Dax, attempt to illustrate an illustration topic, whether I know shit about it or not, in a time shorter than my attention span. And if this free video was useful to you, I still need Patreon patrons for my Eisner-nominated graphic novel, Failing Sky.